if we have the potential to scratch our car every time we touch it, then why do we touch it so much during the car wash process? What if there was just a product that you could foam on the car and it would safely and effectively break down all the dirt and grime without the risk of scratching it? I found this product. This is Wash Chems. This is their professional line, Active Foam Concentrate, and it is a traffic film remover. So professional detailers may know this as like a pre-soak or a pre-wash, right? This is gonna be a heavily, heavily concentrated all-purpose cleaner. It comes in this super heavy-duty bottle with this super gnarly cap, and the product is so gnarly that it'll actually erode and eat the bottle, and so they have to put it in a specialized bottle. It looks very industrial, and so we're gonna try it on Brian's car here. And what I did is I taped half the car because I go back to this pre-rinse or not pre-rinse dilemma, just like I do with wheel cleaners and really all products, is do you want to actually foam the dirty car so the product is not further, further diluted? Or do you want to actually pre-rinse to uh, get all the loose debris off to let this product work as best as possible? I couldn't decide. So we put a tape light down the middle of the car. One half of the car we're actually going to pre-rinse and then foam. And the other half of the car we're just going to leave dirty and then foam it. After we foam it, we'll rinse, and then I'll use the blower to kind of dry everything so I will not touch the vehicle at all during the wash process. And we will see, one, does this product even work, right? Two, what side is actually cleaner, and then is this an effective, safe alternative to whether it's a two-bucket method, an eight-bucket method, a single bucket, pressure washing your mitt out, is this an alternative to washing your car without scratching your car. So that's what I wanted to know. That's what we're gonna hopefully find out. It says for a foam cannon, one to two to one to five. So 10 ounces of soap plus 22 ounces of water. So I have right about 20 ounces of water, 22 ounces of water. The pump pressure sprayer, you can do a gallon. It, it doesn't really apply here. So this is 34 ounces or one liter. So let's crack it, really foamy. Let's pour it in. There we go. So that's about 10 ounces of soap. Put the foam cannon on and we'll do a little pre-rinse and then see how it does. Cool, so now we can foam everything. All right, and it says to let it dwell for two to three minutes, but I just had a couple of thoughts while I was foaming the car. 
One, a product like this may work if you're gonna be ceramic coating a car to like strip everything off of it. So this may be a perfect strip wash. Uh, according to the label also, this stuff will like do everything. So it'll kill bacteria. You could use it um, on cars. You could use it on ATVs. You could use it in ambulances. You could dilute it down to work inside a car because it's just a heavy, heavily concentrated all-purpose cleaner. Um, but this may work really well as a strip wash. So it says to let it dwell for two to three minutes. So with that, I'm interested to see um, how it does. All right, now that it's been two minutes, we can uh, rinse it off. So you can already see there's actually seems to be a little, maybe a little bit of residue left. So I'm gonna make, have to make sure I do a really thorough rinse. But you can see how flat the water is. There wasn't much protection on the paint before I started doing it. But to my theory of like, this might be a really good strip wash option uh, before laying down a new paint protectant. I think that this would be a really good option for that as well. This is also a really cool thing to notice. So you see how the soap is really clinging to the panel. When you're working with a traffic film remover or a strip wash or any soap really of any kind, this is what you wanna look for. So I have lightly hit this with water, but you could really see how the soap is sticking to the surface. And when the soap is sticking to the surface like that, you know that it's clinging and encapsulating the dirt and you're gonna be able to rinse it away. So this is always something that I look for with a car wash soap, how clingy it is to the surface. So now we let it dwell and dry, not dwell, dry. So what I thought I'd do is take a white towel and I'm gonna go like this and wipe all the way down the hood of the car to see how much dirt is left. A Little bit of dirt is left. That is on the pre-rinse side. Now I'll go, uh, I'll flip the towel to a clean side, go on the non-pre-rinse side, do the same thing. So we have the, where'd it go? The pre-rinse side. <laughs> the pre-rinse side right here. Is that even picking that up? A little bit. Little dirt line right there. And then we have the non-pre-rinse side right here. To me, you're splitting hairs. Let's pick two new pieces right here. And let's try the top glass. This will be the non-pre-rinse side. Got a bug with it, which is cool. <laughs> so a little bit of dirt. Oh, it scared me. And then we'll flip the towel to the pre-rinse side. Arguably more dirt on the pre-rinse side, right? Arguably more dirt on the pre-rinse side. So it may not even be worth it to do the pre-rinse. If you look at that, that is the non-pre-rinse side. So there might be an argument to test about just foaming without pre-rinsing and letting the chemical do the work, which is great because then it saves us time. And again, why that may be important too, because if you're rinsing your car and then you're foaming your car and then you're doing the bucket wash, you may, this could prove that you may have contaminants still on top of the paint or loose dirt on the paint, which could be adding to, as you go in with the mitt, actually picking those up and scratching it, even though you pre-rinsed it and you thought that you got rid of all those. So this could bring up the argument of don't pre-rinse your car, just foam it, let the product break down everything, then rinse that, and you will actually have less loose debris on your paintwork than if you were to actually pre-rinse, which is kind of retraining re our brain to how we wash cars. So that's interesting. But 
I think that product is good for a multitude of ways. I'm not sure I would use it every day. I, I think, you know, one time I was using like a CarPro Reset. That would be a great alternative to CarPro Reset because it's a lot more economical than CarPro Reset is. But I was using CarPro Reset for an extended amount of time because I didn't want to touch my car at all. And what I found is because it is a strong alkaline product, um, it tends to corrode things a little bit faster. So a product like that, you definitely don't want to be using on your car like weekly or even monthly, really. Uh, you save that for special occasions. Like I said, a car that hasn't been cleaned in a long time and you're trying to let the chemical do the work. Um, a car that maybe has been experienced to like heavy snow or heavy dirt, an ATV, a, a truck trailer, uh, a big rig, something like that. So use sparingly, pre-soaking for if you're going to do a coating and, and you want to do a strip wash. That's where I think that product would fit in. But have you ever tried that product yourself? Let me know in the comments below. Love to hear your thoughts, feelings, and emotions below. But overall, I think I like the product. I think it just has a certain uh, space in the whole realm of car washing and everything. I think more importantly, I'm a little, I'm rethinking how I wash cars now. So that's kind of interesting. So thanks for watching this one. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.